All right, number 10 is an implicit function, and it asks us to differentiate that function um, at x equals negative 1. So remember with the implicit functions, you want to take the derivative of every term, uh, and y terms are going to have dy dx. xy is a product, so I'm going to do the derivative of x times y plus x times the derivative of y and 2x is the derivative of x squared, and the derivative of 1 is simply 0. Um, if I move my dy dx's to the same side, I'm going to get 1, and this term will be minus x, and that's equal to y plus 2x. And finally, dy dx equals y plus 2x over 1 minus x. Uh, my derivative expression has both x's and y's in it. All I was given here was an x value of negative 1. So I also have to figure out the y that corresponds to an x value of negative 1. Um, that's a little side problem. Um, y plus y equals 2, 2y two equals 2, y equals 1. So these are the values that I'm going to use in this expression. So my dy dx equals 1 plus 2 times negative 1 over 1 minus negative 1. That's going to be 1 minus 2 over 1 plus 1. Negative 1 over 2 is my answer, and b is what we get. All right, 11. We've got a indefinite integral here. Uh, 1 to infinity of x over 1 plus x squared squared dx. Uh, we should recognize this as a u sub problem. I'm going to let u be the stuff in the parentheses there. du would be 2x dx. Uh, I don't have a 2 there, so I'm going to put a 2 and a 1 half out in front. This becomes 1 half the integral of du over u squared and that's going to be 1 half the integral of u to the negative 2 du. That gives me 1 half u to the negative 1 over negative 1. So I have negative 1 half um, u, which is 1 plus x squared to the negative first. And I'm evaluating that from 1 to infinity. Remember that uh, I can't use infinity as a number, so I'm going to change that to b and take a limit as b goes to infinity. Limit as b goes to infinity of negative 1 over 2 times 1 plus x squared evaluated at 1 and at b. So I have a limit problem. I've got negative 1 over 2 times 1 plus b squared and then minus a negative, so that's going to be plus 1 over 2 times 2. And as b goes to infinity, this term will go to 0, and I get 1 fourth c. Looks like our answer for 11. And 12 is our last problem on this page. Uh, once again, we have a graph of a derivative. Uh, the question is, what are, what are the extrema? What do I know about the extrema? So I'm going to do the analysis here for f prime, writing out the critical numbers. So there's 1, here's a, and here's b. Um, there's a critical number here where the derivative is going to be 0. There's a critical number here where the derivative is going to be 0. And there's another one here where the derivative is going to be 0. Within those intervals, I have a negative derivative, a positive derivative, a negative derivative, and a positive derivative. And what I can conclude from that is that I have a relative min at this first point a relative max, and then a relative min. So when I look through my options, I've got two mins and one max. Uh, one max and two min is answer A.